Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer. Post positions have been drawn for the grade one $1.25 million Kentucky Oaks. The Derby for the Phillies. Let's take a look at the post positions and the morning line odds from Churchill Downs odds maker, Mike Battaglia. This is a fascinating race, Mike. There's going to be a heavy favorite in there in the number four, Bella Fina, and deservedly so for what she's done throughout her career. But there also appears to be a ton of speed. You have horses like the seven Jaywalk, the eight Motion Emotion, the 13 Serengeti Empress. Those are three legitimate speed types right there. And Bella Fina likes to be close to the pace. Do you see a situation where maybe she gets shuffled back down towards the rail going into the first turn? Yeah, I mean, there are certainly things working against this horse um, at, at a short price in this race. I think, you know, obviously based on what she's accomplished so far, she's a deserving uh, morning line favorite in this race. But as you mentioned, the pace could work against her. I mean, I think there has to be some concern when you just look at her PPs and then watch her races. You know, whether or not she's really going to get better taking on um, some added distance in this race and going a mile and eight for the first time. I mean, these are serious questions for this horse to answer at a short price. A field of 14 entered, plus two also eligibles, and I want to talk about the horse that drew the far outside post in 14. That is Restless Rider. Now, Restless Rider, you never want to be outside, but Restless Rider at least is a kind of horse that can race for mid-pack, should get the right scenario. With a horse like Serengeti Empress to the inside, with sort of a presser stalker like Street Band to the inside, Restless Rider Rider can sort of break and make her own trip while gradually making her way to the inside. Yeah, all those things are true. It'll, I guess the question with her will just be is, um, you know, can she finally pass a horse uh, late and get a, um, a bigger victory on her card? Because she hasn't won a bad race yet, Dan, but she settled for second best in three straight races. And there aren't really that many excuses you could give her, especially for the last two, I guess. Um, as far as the outside post goes, you know, I think generally speaking, being in post 14, in a two-turn route race, um, it's not that great. On the other hand, Monomoy Girl broke from post 14 and won last year. Abel Tasman broke from post 13 and won the year before that. Catherine Sophia, post 12 the year before that. Um, and you'd have to go back that far. And uh, Untappable was in post 12 as well. So being on the outside hasn't hindered a lot of horses in this race. Now that's a very good point. It hasn't really hindered horses at mile in an eighth race as at Churchill Downs over the last few years later. I could find few negative patterns. I want to throw up the time form U.S. pace projector. It is a red bar scenario indicating a fast pace. Time form U.S. believes that motion to motion outfoots Jaywalk and Serengeti Empress to the lead. And there we have Bella Fina sitting in fourth. But there are also horses that are pretty quick. Pressers that we see sitting in the second or third flight. Horses like like Lady Apple, or even out for a spin, the one is pretty quick out of the gate. Jeltrin, the 11, stretching out. It'll be interesting to see. Do you think the 13 Serengeti Empress is going to concede? Motion to Motion is a very fast horse. We saw that in her last two races at Oaklawn. But Serengeti Empress might simply be at her best when she is able to make the front. I mean, so far, it just seems like she's an absolute need-the-lead kind of horse, Dan. According to Tom Amos, and, you know, who knows, but according to him already, he's saying... He is not conceding lead to anybody in this race. He wants her on the front. That's where she needs to be from post 13. I don't even know that they have that many options with her. I think they got to send her and try and make the front. Does that work to Jay Walk's favor? Yes, she would be chasing a fast pace then. Because again, I don't think Mike Smith's going to blink an eye with motion to motion. I think he's going with motion to motion. If Serengeti Empress is going to go, they're going to play chicken going into the first turn. Jay Walk has not been good this year, but she's getting back to Churchill Downs where she won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. And maybe she gets that trip sort of sitting next to Bella Fina. Yeah, you know, maybe she does. Um, we'll see, you know, how she does without the lead. I don't think she needs it, Dan. I think she could run from just off the pace. It's just a question of, you know, how you feel about her first two starts this year and whether you just feel like there are excuses for them. And this, this Friday is the day that she turns it all around again because she has not been good in her two starts this year. I wonder if Chocolate Kisses is going to get the right setup at a giant price for Julian Leperu because her last win at Oaklawn Park, it was a similar situation as to this. Motion to motion went very, very fast early. There was a heated pace. It was a meltdown. Chocolate Kisses angled down towards the inside and was able to win that race. She breaks from an inside post here. She figures to save some ground. She's going to get pace. Maybe she's the closer to consider at a giant price. Yeah, I mean, as a one-run closer, you can't ask for a much better situation than that. A really fast pace in front of you and an inside draw, so you can at least save ground early 
before you have to maybe take to the outside. Those things will help her. She has basically one race on her card that makes her competitive, but it was also the only other race where she caught a huge pace to run into. I know you're not a post-position guy where I don't think it's going to affect your handicapping that much. Do you think anyone was adversely affected or was anyone really, really benefit from the post-position draw? Yeah, I don't know if I feel like anybody, um, you know, got a big boost from where they drew. Um, I just don't really look at this as a situation where anybody could have really gotten skunked at the draw. I mean, I don't think it makes that much of a difference. Um, obviously, there are certain horses I think that you could look at and say they're better off drawing, you know, one place or another. Maybe Serengeti Empress being that far outside isn't great for her, but I can't really argue with uh, the filters that anybody got. Stay with us all week long on DRF TV at video.drf.com. We'll have all the graded stakes previews for Churchill Downs on Friday and Saturday, a couple editions of our flagship program out of the gate, the Matt Bernier Show, the Timeform U.S. Pace Cast, and lots, lots more. It's Kentucky Derby Week, and it doesn't get any better than that.